Okay, welcome back. Today, you know, we see people doing things. We don't think you should do these things. We're gonna talk about things that you should just probably never do when you're backpacking. Don't be that person. Don't do that. This is like our extensive list of things we do not think you should do when you're backpacking. But first, all right, folks. We got some. Andy's always doing the plug. We got an important message here because I was watching analytics. <laughs> <laughs> you need to watch more of our podcasts. <laughs> yeah, come on. You need, to watch, you need to watch more of our podcasts. And on, put it on the car. Yeah, yeah. Put it on in the car. You know what a great one is? It's like when you're doing dishes or emptying the dishwasher, have it going in the background. All right. <laughs> analytics have been going a little slow lately, folks. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. You can get you can get the podcast at, at uh, any podcasting site. All of them. All of them. We've got them all. Also, you know, the merch is out there, folks. The merch is it's out, out there. there. And we sold some stickers we, last week. Yeah. True story. And it's awesome when people buy our merch and they tag us on Instagram. It's always great to see. We'll repost it if we can. But yes, please support the channel. Buy the merch. Subscribe. Like the videos leave comments, and let's get back to it. One thing, we learned this, or at least I learned this on our last trip, that you should never do backpacking is, if you're going somewhere that is high altitude, we've made this mistake uh, many consecutive years. If you're going somewhere high, like Colorado, or California, or someplace where you're gonna be dealing with the altitude, try not to just fly in and then immediately go to like 10,000 feet if you can. We've done that, check out our last two Colorado videos. Either Bryce or myself, we've just gotten destroyed by the elevation, you know, I live at sea level, I live, well, I live at like 700 feet, which is basically sea level. But one thing you should really try to avoid is if you're going somewhere and there's altitude you're gonna be battling, try and get out there, maybe a day or two ahead of time if you can, try and acclimate for a few days. If you can't do that, there's a couple like pharmaceutical interventions you can do. People say like taking ibuprofen or there's actually a prescription medication called Diamox that I didn't know about, but I was told about after my last trip that you can maybe get a prescription for, but there are interventions you can do to try and negate some of the effects of the altitude because battling altitude sickness really sucks. Watch our last Colorado video if you want to see me do that and Bryce do that, but try and budget like even a day a day or two before you go up there to acclimate will really help. And if you can't do that, check out some medicines you get into to maybe alleviate some of the symptoms of altitude sickness because you never know when it's gonna hit you. The only cure for when it does hit you is you gotta go back down, which sucks. So try not to do that if you don't have to. All right, this is more of a little etiquette thing. All right, don't it, do it, don't do it. But it drives me absolutely nuts. <laughs> that should be good. Okay, let's say you're, you're nearing the end of the, a day and you're in campsite selection mode, okay? And so you grab a campsite and then a couple hours later, another group shows up in that area. Oh, this is good. And they come right into your campsite when in a situation where there are open spaces in other places. So don't, it kind of goes along like yours, don't be a dick, don't ruin the experience. There's a time- People don't know that you shouldn't do this. There's a time and a place when you, ha like sometimes, you have no choice and there's limited areas and you gotta share your site, that's completely understandable. But if the campsite's taken and you know there's other areas, like move on, move on, okay? Move on. Or ask for permission, but respect other people, the fact that they are out and enjoying nature and probably don't wanna camp with a million other people. Again, there's a time and a place when that has to be done, depending on the size. It's and, life or death. Yeah, and like we've shared campsites before because there, there's no choice, um, but if by, by all means, if you're coming up to a campsite, you know, and it's filled, just move on and find another one. And if you can't, then, you know, talk to everybody, make sure everybody's cool with you guys setting up camp. There's plenty of forest for everybody. Yes. We don't have to share. Next thing you should never do, this is kind of an obvious one. Don't sleep with your food, people. I mean, there's no reason to do that. At least like get it outside your tent if you're too lazy to hang it. Don't sleep with your food. You know, when we were out in Colorado, we met a ton of through hikers and they were basically like at the end of their through hike, they were sleeping with their food, but they didn't care. Don't do that. Where we hike in the east, we got a lot of black bears. People get mauled every year in the Smoky Mountains. 
They weren't necessarily sleeping with their food, but you shouldn't sleep with your food, especially in bear country. It's just a, it's a, it's just an easy thing to not do. You know, like I said, if, if you don't want to like keep it in your tent, just like throw it somewhere. There's no reason to sleep with it. If you want to have that late night beef jerky, you know, that's okay. Just bring it in the tent with you. You don't have to bring your whole food bag, but don't sleep with your food. There's no reason to do that. Spend the five minutes, throw up a bear line or a critter line and just don't worry about it. You, you don't want to have to worry about it because all it takes is one instance and it will totally destroy your trip. This, yeah. one, this one's yeah. hilarious. Okay. Luckily, we don't have this problem anymore with our group of people that we backpack with. What drives me nuts are food mooches. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're going to be a food mooch, you have to have you have to have something to you have give. to at least be fun. You have to be fun and you have to give out something in return. But I cannot stand it when like everybody's sitting around and there's this random guy like person is just sitting there and like, hey, are you, can I have some of that? Are you gonna finish that? Are you gonna eat that? And it's usually a situation where they didn't bring enough of their own food and they got food envy. But we bring good food. Yeah, don't mooch off people. Bring bring enough food. If you think if you think you're gonna want to be eating a bunch of snacks at the end of the day, make sure you bring a bunch of snacks. Like nobody wants like you know what else is really gross. Like you're hiking all day, your hands are all nasty, and then like what do people want to stick your hand their hand in like your beef jerky bag or your trail mix oh, bag? Gross. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> yeah. No. So bring your own food. Bring enough of it for yourself. And yeah, sure, it's fun to share food, but like just don't be that person that's always just begging for like other people's stuff because it's better than what you brought. This is gonna be an obvious one just don't be a dick and what I mean with that this is a, an umbrella term for things like don't blast a Bluetooth speaker don't fly a drone at people don't cut switchbacks don't leave trash out there you know we could go into each one of these things individually but it call it, it all encompasses this idea of just don't be a dick you know what those things are don't ruin the outdoors for other people. You know, early in our backpacking life, you know, we carry a Bluetooth speaker sometimes, but we make sure we don't use it around other people. I take a drone sometimes. I do not drone around other people and I do not drone where it's illegal. Just common sense things that are like really easy to not do and, and by not doing them, you can really make sure the other people around you have a good time. And then also things like cutting switchbacks, leaving little micro trash. It falls under the leave no trace thing, but it's all to us, it's like, just don't be a dick, okay? You know what that means. Don't ruin the experience for other people. Another one. Now I gotta, I gotta caveat this one because Kevin and I do this, but Kevin is, a, a, obviously we hike together 99.9% .9 of the time. So I trust Kevin and Kevin trusts me, but you should be self-sufficient with your gear. Um, no gear mooches. Yeah, no gear mooches either. Uh, you should be bringing your own stove system, your own water filter. Do not have reliances on other people. Even though Kevin and I do share a lot of our stuff, I do carry my own cook kit, I do carry my own water filter, but we generally only use one. But um, that's just safe to do, um, not relying on others. And then it's also kind of annoying if like you gotta like, if you're in line for the jet boil or something like that. Um, so. <laughs> when have you seen a line for the jet boil? They're always in the David Gray videos. Everybody's like waiting for Travis's jet boil. Yeah, and they all have their own that's stoves, true. but they're like, oh, I can that's boil true. my water in Travis's jet that's boil true. in like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Travis is so nice. <laughs> Travis is too nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so be self-sufficient carry your own gear. You know, if you wanna like share some stuff, that's fine, but just don't have reliances on other people. Like the worst thing that could happen is you show up to the to the trailhead because you're meeting your group and, and, you're like, and it's that situation of like, wait, I thought you brought the water filter. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, so carry your own gear. Next thing, this is an easy one. Don't, don't hike with anything cotton. Just don't do it, it's really easy. We got enough technical t-shirts, technical fabrics out there. You don't want to ever bring cotton, even for like socks or underwear, no cotton. It doesn't dry, it's heavy, it chafes, it doesn't breathe, and there's like a million other fabrics that are better. Just don't do it, don't, don't bring your cotton, you don't need it. There's way better stuff to do. It's a really easy thing that can make your trip much better. And like I said, there's so many other options that are just the same cost wise and they're just so much better. It's not the 1960s anymore. 
no cotton. We got like, you know, super cool futuristic fabrics that are just way better, way lighter, potentially cheaper. You don't need to ruin your experience by having bad clothes, no cotton. Cotton actually breathes really well. Well, not in this video, it doesn't. <laughs> More trail etiquette, all right? Uphill has the right of way, folks. <laughs> Uphill has the right of way. Get out of the way. If, if you're coming downhill, you need to get out of the way for people going uphill. Yes, you can do that like awkward eye contact thing or like sometimes I'll be going uphill and somebody will move over and I'll just be like, nah, I wanna take a break. Like you go ahead, but, but just assume if you're going downhill, the person coming uphill has the right of way and you need to get out of the way for them. Also kind of in that same thing, you know, every once in a while on the trail, you come up to other groups of people walking. And if the group behind you is faster, pull over and let them go by you. Same with mountain bikes. Same with mountain bikes. It's not a race. It's not a race, but it is good etiquette to let the faster people go in front of you. You'd be surprised. Like, I can't believe I have to say that, but like, it's, it's kind of weird. Every once in a while, there's some odd situations. And then also, just remember, if you're going downhill, let the people uphill uh, buy first, okay? It's surprisingly annoying, I guess. It's like merging on the freeway. Yeah. yeah. Right away. Last one. I, I got this from Suge. Something I, I try and do. Don't ever, don't ever hike with worry. And I know that sounds like stupid and hippie, but you're out in the woods. The last thing you want to be doing is just worrying about everything because it, it's going to make your experience worse. I know there are tons of things to worry about, like, is a tree gonna fall on me? Is a bear gonna eat me? Am I gonna get Giardia? There's actually a lot of things to worry about now that I list them out. But don't think about that. Odds are none of that stuff's gonna happen to you and you can take a lot of proactive stack steps to make sure none of those things happen to you. And you don't wanna be out there the whole time just worrying about stuff because you're not gonna have a good time. And what's the point of being out there if you're not having a good time? So just know you can take precautions to avoid all these worrisome situations and odds are nothing bad is going to happen to you. In fact, it's probably, not probably, it's much more likely that something terrible is going to happen to you in the city than out in the woods. So don't hike with worry. Suge always talks about that and it's something I always try and do. You don't want to be out there worrying about stuff you're gonna have a worse time. Well, I wonder how many people are gonna be upset about this. A lot of people probably do these things. Yeah. This well, is a shocking reality yeah. check for them. Yeah, you know what's crazy is like, in, in the actual, like, like in in a what I would call the serious backpacking community, when you say like, don't leave micro trash, everyone's like, yeah, no crap, don't leave micro trash. But it's just like, you People go, do. People do, people do all the time. And um, yeah, so <laughs> respect everybody outdoors. Don't rely on anybody and don't ruin other people's, you know, outdoor recreating as we say. But thanks for watching. See y'all in the next one.